that 100 percent just opened on a bird. <laughs> What's going on? Happy Easter. Ha oh, happy can Easter. Can I say that? Yeah, you can say that. Buona Pasqua. What's that happy mean? Happy Easter. It means happy Easter in Italian. <laughs> Jasmine's here. Oh. Yay. Hopefully you I'm can here. hear Hello. everybody. So we have two special guests, the one and only Surya and the one and only Jasmine. <laughs> I'm not special. I'm just here now. Oh, Surya is recovering from Olivia Rodrigo. Is yeah, that how you say her name? That's how you say her name. <laughs> How? Okay, I guess we'll start off with Surya then. We'll get to Jasmine in a second. I feel like Jasmine hasn't been around for a while. Yeah, we'll get to Jasmine in a second. How, um, how was your week and how was Olivia? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia Rodrigo was fantastic as always. I went to go see her in concert about two years ago. My voice is still kind of shot. And I saw her on Friday at Scotiabank, and it was absolutely incredible. It was so empowering. And yeah, her I guess some people can say her music is repetitive or whatever, but there's such a deeper message behind it. And it's not only with relationships, it's like with everything in life. So I'm sure I'm sure you guys know of her. If you don't know of her, go check out her songs. They're amazing. Yeah, that's not Olivia! Driver's License was Driver's one of my favorite songs ever created. You know I'll what's funny? That. I got oh. the notification that I was in the first, like, 3% of listeners of Driver's License. Damn. Can you believe that? Or 10% or something? Because it came out on, on, on TikTok one time, and I just looked it up, like, what, what is this? Were you going through a tough time? I have been going through a very tough time. Is that a problem? Oh, my God. I'm not... <laughs> like, what? Wait, are we in the joke making phase yet? Like... There's several jokes I've wanted to make about our friend group. <laughs> um, Jasmine, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be back. I know it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine, I don't for the... know if. Oh, you yeah, go. You I don't go. Really know where to start on that. <laughs> well, you've been around. So Jasmine and I have known each other for a really long time. We were actually the first people to collaborate with each other, I believe. Yeah, way back in, like, super early 2018. I think we might have met online, like, late 2017 or super early 2018. And we were both kind of snooping around the construction situation, doing what we're doing now, but back then. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we even, like, did a couple videos together and stuff way back then. Um, and since then, I've moved, so I'm not in the Toronto area anymore. I'm in Florida now, and that's a long story in itself. Um but yeah, some of you guys may recognize me from pa past um, podcasts. I've been on a few times, like several months back, and I am back again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I don't even know. I don't. I don't know where to start. Okay, so I will. I, I I can't say too much, but I guess like I have to be a little careful with what I say now about Project Twenty Twenty Five a little bit more than, yeah. So I can't go into details, but I have to be a little more cautious about how I talk about things and what kind of videos and pictures I share. Um, so I don't know. Go watch previous videos. <laughs> um, we have a lot to talk about. Ja First of all, Jasmine hasn't given a single opinion to you guys about her thoughts on this whole project. Surya is given very minimal Right, you've been on you've been on one podcast. Surya's got a lot of opinions. Surya's actually helped me out a lot behind the scenes. <laughs> I'll send him like a photo. I'm like, Surya, what does this mean? And he's like, Brendan, it's a tree branch. <laughs> and then Craig is Craig. I still think there's gonna be a whole <laughs> shop in the mountain, and that's what I'm on. Nobody's changing that for me. Are they selling vapes in the mountain? I'm, that'd be awesome. I don't vape. <laughs> Vaping's bad for you. I don't condone vaping. You actually have quit. Do you want to talk I about do that? Not vape. No. <laughs> no. no. I stopped vaping. I don't know when. I didn't even count the days because I don't want to make some bullshit excuse. No, that's a good. That's a success some, story. Some so. excuse about you know I stopped for this amount of time and then started again. Nope. I have no clue when I stopped. I haven't been vaping for a little while now. I changed to these little nicotine pouches that you put in your mouth. <laughs> We don't condone that here. No, I'm kidding. But two of those or three of those a day is much better than having my, my vape in my hand literally 24-7. Well, you, you have like ADHD too, right? 24-7. Yeah. Always in my hand. Or if you watch any other stream from, what, the last... Well, we haven't done a stream in a while, but the last not, stream, not I would leave every yeah. half an hour. Where was I going? I was going to vape. 
Yeah. <laughs> in the corner. So. Well, that's progress then. Jeez, we're <laughs> working at it. Jeez. Everybody's road to quitting looks different. Um, so I guess let's go one by one and describe. Let's start with what you think it'll be. Your your top three selections for what you think this coaster is going to be. What we think or what we want? What you think. Okay. Think, not want. Do you, let's start with Jasmine. Let's do it in this order always. I'll be last always. For reference, Jasmine's always. Jasmine, you're always. first. The, Jasmine's number one. For us. Okay, so my thoughts of this have evolved over time. Um, I fully, like, when the speculation on this first started, like, ages ago, I definitely was thinking, oh, we're just going to get another B&M, especially because of those images that the park put out when they were doing the surveys on, like, oh, would you guys like this mountain coaster or this other thing? Um, I thought we were just going to get another, like, you know, B&M of some kind. But since then, I... Uh, I want to say I'm on the same page as Brendan when it comes to, like, the manufacturer options. Um, I think it's definitely obviously going to be launched. We we pretty much know that at this point. But I think we very well could be looking at... Oh, what was the one that we threw in the other day that threw everyone for a loop? Was it Premier? Premier is the new... The, yes. The new guy. That actually I have been leaning towards since that little tidbit came out. And I know it's going to make a lot of people mad. But as somebody who's currently in Florida and is a massive fan of Revenge of the Mummy, it gives me hope that we could get a good <laughs> premier coaster. Because <laughs> um, there are some really good ones out there. And I do think, obviously, it's going to go through the mountain. And again, leaning, if, if it's going to be premier... I am leaning towards that sort of like half dark ride, half uh, poster experience. Well, maybe not half and half, because let's be honest, we only have so much space in the mountain. But I do think we're going to have a little dark ride moment in the mountain, and then it's going to launch out of the mountain and be mostly outdoors. Um, if not premier, then I obviously am hoping for uh, Zamprilla. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess B&M is like a very far third behind because I just don't think that's very likely anymore given the changes that we've seen. Um, but yeah, I'm really hoping for my, my biggest things I'm hoping for like at least a small dark ride element, a little like stop and sort of showpiece moment in the mountain, not just like shooting straight through the mountain and not like really utilizing that. Um, and I just want it to be more thrill than family, but I think it probably will be more likely on the like family thrill side of things. That's where I'm at currently, but it changes often. So ask me yeah. again another day. <laughs> today's bombshell was a bombshell. Like we won't go into details, but today's bombshell was a bombshell. It was like it was like we S won't go into STFU. We'll it like ten times. <laughs> um, sir, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So. Yeah, obviously, like Jasmine said, my opinion, our, all of our opinions have been, like, you know, literally changing day by day. I still think um, Zamperla is a possibility just based off of what they said at Winter Chill Out about how, you know, the LSMs and the ride perform flawlessly in most weather conditions, especially in winter time, And that's definitely something that, you know, needs I think needs account. to be taken into account, especially at a park like Wonderland and maybe even for Winterfest. So I think Zamperla's in. I think Vacoma is also a player because um, Kings Island's getting that family soapbox coaster, whatever it's called, the family boomerang. And um, Vacoma has been doing more stuff in North America. And a lot of their newer products, like in Europe, look actually really cool, in my opinion. So I think Vacoma is an option. And I guess. For the mountain, I guess ma Premier just based off of like, um, I don't, I don't know. I guess Premier. <laughs> we already have a Premier attraction ride, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you know, so it, it's not like like you know Cedar Fair has worked with Premier in the past before, and if you look at like the Flight of Fears, even though they're going on 30 years old, they're still used to being built indoors and confined spaces, and they can do a lot of the type maneuverings that like a B&M can't, which might be something that they want to look into. Now, if it has nothing to do with the mountain for 2025, but it's still like another part of the park or something, I would say... Uh, Are you okay? <laughs> I, I, I would say a B&M wing coaster. I am holding out for a B&M wing coaster going over front gate. 
Craig, uh, <laughs> Brendan's having a malfunction. Yeah, okay, Brendan first of all, can't there's... handle it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, 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 I need to recover. <laughs> go, 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 please go. Well, Seriously. <laughs> well, I'm for sure about to get laughed at, but I'm still on so team. Yeah, you. sure, that's that's what we'll call it. Thank you. I'm on team invert still. Nobody's taking me off that team until there is a piece of track on site that tells me <laughs> otherwise. And on top of that, we are going to be walking into the mountain and we are going to be seeing a market in the mountain. Otherwise, who makes inverts? B&M makes okay, an invert. Okay, but I, I support you on that. I yeah. think I'm the only one. I, s I still think that could be How? possible awesome would it be to market it as come in the mountain after 45 years like that'd be amazing okay. but i i'm about to derail your theory here. no yeah i am so there's been a really solid rumor that's come out I, I should be making a video before this but time warp and flight deck are apparently actually on their way out well they're in the next two years that's fine i don't care if I that's just... the case to me that screams they have an invert flyer or wing on the way over there invert getting an invert i'm telling you until there's a piece of track that tells me otherwise it's an invert and he's not uh, giving up <laughs> we are going to be walking in the mountain to a restaurant slash food stand slash something <laughs> sometime soon i really think though that, that you're you have some footing to stand on with the idea of the like market or some kind of walkable something in there at least even a small portion of it and i'm sticking to this with you because there's always an exit through the gift shop moment, especially with like highly themed rides. And look, look at the parks that they supposedly went to look at when considering what next attractions they're adding, right? All of those parks, you always exit through the gift shop. And so the thing that makes yeah. most sense in my mind yeah, is to like exit that. through a really impressively themed gift shop in the mountain. And it might not be big, it might just be like kind of like on your way out, <laughs> but I think it's possible. I do think that visit to Universal had a bigger reasoning behind it than Velocicoaster. I think there's a whole vision. You, mine is the 1% of enthusiasts that actually visit this park. I'm telling you, you can ask probably anybody at random, and they will say, yes, they'd like to go into the mountain to buy a drink or a food item or even be able to sit in there and but eat. But why would we want to go into the mountain to buy a drink? Okay, you know what? Save your thought because I drew out a really detailed map. Oh my god, I haven't even gone into even winter. Oh my god, we haven't even started the podcast. Yeah, we yet. literally haven't started. Oh my, what are we even <laughs> talking about? Do you, let's start it, okay? This is something I paid too much money for. Well, good. We see it every three seconds. <laughs> um, Project Alpin. Nice okay. Detailed map. This was. I actually put a lot of effort into I this. Said nice. Okay. What's okay. The problem. <laughs> Can't take a compliment. Oh my lord. Okay, so this is a really detailed map of everything I know so far. So I literally, for anyone out there who's like, Brennan doesn't share his information, it's all right there on the screen for you. Um, so I want you guys to pay attention to this electrical work going on. And in fact, I think Surya would be the best person to talk about this because Surya has actually been my biggest help with this electrical kind of like understanding what could be happening here. Obviously, there's multiple scenarios that could play out. Yeah, for sure. But why don't you describe what you think is going on? Like you have the old powerhouse. Are you freezing? Here? I am freezing. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you. There's there's a fan oh under the my table. Oh god. <laughs> Relax, ladies. All right. Um okay, so what what, what am I doing? Okay describing what is going on with the electrical work. So obviously if you've been watching the construction updates, they've been working on a trench for what, like a week, week and a half, laying down conduit and other types of, uh, laying down conduit, laying down electrical lines. And if it was like one or two of that kind of gauge, then you would assume, okay, maybe that's for a small building, like a food stand or anything, but all the existing structures in that area are already hooked up to some type of a grid, right? Like Alp and Cheesery, that uses mostly gas for the appliances, that's already hooked up to water and electrical, so that's not necessary. And the lines are clearly going towards the mountain, towards that new, um, the the new access area, uh -huh. right? So. I I think, and obviously this is probably, this could very well be a stretch, but if you look at a ride like 
any anything that uses LSMs like Maverick, um, Pantheon, and anything with a launch, they have a lot of multiple electrical lines feeding those LSMs, feeding the magnets, right? Because it takes a lot of power, and there it is very well possible that there already is pre-existing infrastructure in the mountain that can do some of it. But if you have you know a longer launch, like let's say a Maverick size launch that brings you up to 120 kilometers an hour, or anything like that, or multiple launches you're going to need more electricity and you're going to need power, right? And that's not going to come in the form as one giant conduit, one giant cable. That's going to come in the form as multiple lines because you have to feed those to multiple stator motors, in my opinion. Yeah. <clears throat> so they're, they literally are building a power station, it looks like. Like, it's almost like if you were to look at it, there's a clear, almost like power station forming. Now, with that in mind... Do you think the station's in the mountain, or do you think it's on Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land? If this is Project 2025. Probably in the mountain. Um, and, and just that power station, though, that, that just those are pretty much like DC transformers, right? So they take the, the dial-down current that comes in from the grid or whatever, then they amplify it, turn it into DC current, then they send it off through the lines. In fact, it probably could even go to capacitor banks then so they can store it before they actually launch it. Like if you have like 20 capacitors inside the mountain somewhere, you know, each capacitor is gonna need its own individual line and then you store it and then you release all that energy at once to launch whatever you're launching. And that specific power source, for those of you that don't know, powered a powered coaster that requires a lot of power. Thunder Run, that, that was Thunder Run's old station. How do you pronounce it? Jasmine, this is your forte. <laughs> Thunder Run? Yeah, how did you pronounce the old one? Oh, uh, Kratchen Wagon? No. <laughs> Blower. Oh, Blower Enzian. Yeah. Blower Enzian. I don't know if I'm saying What is that? Right, you didn't I'm know that? No. That's, that's the, the original name of uh, Thunder Run. The, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I don't know why Kratchen Wagon Choo -choo. came to mind, but I guess they're all similar. Wait, like, how, how is it pronounced? But Blower Enzian, and I, I could be saying that wrong. Someone correct me if I am, but that's how I've always said it. Blower Enzian. Yeah. What was it? No, what was the theme to? A train. <laughs> it was a train. Wasn't it a train? Wasn't there a mountain? It was there? literally just a figure eight coaster. But was it? It, it was smaller than the current Thunder Run. A fake mountain thing built around it? Like I don't think so. Coaster? No, no, no. That's oh, so that's cool. Great Whale I never of China yeah. that had that, isn't it? No. Great One Whale of China like was a, legendary. Bring a, Great Whale of China back. Like a rocky kind of background. Oh, you're talking about yeah, the it, um, the uh, where where was Baron's Curve? Uh, clockwork. It was clockwork, honestly kind of just on a concrete pad. Like, it wasn't very well themed. <laughs> I agree. I'm shocked. That is a rare moment. Yeah. I, Someone clip that and yeah. post it. <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely didn't know that was the original name of Thunder. Yeah, no, let me I see if I can find a picture Run. and maybe do like a screen share. What? I'm going to. I pulled up a picture of it, but I don't know how I could show it to you guys. But. Yes, it was a, just basically a figure eight. I believe they actually expanded the layout when they moved it into the mountain a little bit. Um, and it was just on a concrete pad with like a fence around it. I didn't know that. <sighs> yeah, no. Um, I lost my train of thought there for a second. So you have that. They've moved the Coca-Cola refresh station. Tiny Tom's is getting a much bigger building. Good. And we have shipping and receiving and maintenance tunnel marked on this map. Thunder Run's exit has been permanently redirected, or we assume permanently. A lot of work to go into just redirect it for an, one season. They did a beautiful job. I got to see a little sneak peek. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. So with all this movement, there's talk that Elpin has nothing to do with 2025. There's like... There's like talk out there. There's there's the possibility. Do you ever see Cedar Fair cutting a hole into the mountain? I have a really counter argument to what people are thinking. I'm making an argument that the coaster comes over here, but I have a really good counter argument as to why maybe it doesn't. But I want to ask you guys: Do you think that with all this movement and work, the coaster doesn't come over here? Are, are you... Yeah, I guess Jasmine, Jasmine go. go. If there's a possibility, I'm I'm like I want to say I'm not quite fifty fifty. I'm maybe like thirty seventy with the seventy percent that it is related to the coaster and thirty percent that it 
could not be related to the coaster because it could either be a full retheme of that area because we know that Cedar Fair likes to revamp an area when they're doing a new addition. So it could be related to just sort of bringing new life to that area. Maybe some of those buildings needed work and it was just better for them to take them down and do something totally different anyways. Um, or it could be maybe to do with another future attraction coming. Like sometimes it's it's about what's best for the budget. If they're bringing in a crew to do a certain type of work or demolition, sometimes it's better to just bundle things together and do certain things all at once, even though that may not be relevant until a little farther down the road. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that could go into it. I feel like just because we're seeing all this construction related to this attraction happening right now that it is most likely related to it but there is that 30 percent in my mind that's like it could be something else could be retheme could be for the future we don't know and it's the same thing with skyflyer i'm like i'm a little less confident that that's related because it's so much farther away but it, that too could go either way like they could be planning for the future and it just budget wise made more sense to do certain things now at, at the same time as all this other work um, or it could be that this thing is going to be massive and span across like three different areas. We don't know. What are your thoughts? Um, I, <laughs> I have a really good counter argument. No, I, I mean, okay, I very well could be for inside the mountain. Like if they wanted to do something like dark coaster at Bush Gardens, Williamsburg for winter fest purposes or something, or, or Zamperla or whatever we said, but um, I, a, a big part of me thinks it actually is going to go at Extreme Skyflyer's plot of land for a major roller coaster. I don't know. I, I think. Based off of the mess, it, based off of something, I feel like this might be Canada's Wonderland's biggest project. There's a lot of. I've never seen the level of secrecy and protection over <laughs> Jasmine's, <laughs> Jasmine's holding in a lap. <laughs> I've never seen the level of like, yeah, like uh, STF, like <laughs> shut the, shut the, <clears throat> the, the, something seems weird about this project that's actually making me be like, ooh, maybe this isn't like, ooh. this yeah. is either like the biggest investment ever or the biggest family coaster investment ever. I don't know. Each day I'm starting to think a wing coaster is more and more plausible again, starting at Extreme's plot of land. Look at Jake's thinking that we don't know that the microphone is in the camera. <laughs> Jake, it's, it's, we weren't very smart in setting up Jasmine into the stream. This is a last minute resort. <laughs> this is our communication with Jasmine. It works. That's my mic. <laughs> Um, yeah, what do you think? What was even the question? You guys have been talking. Do you for think the coaster's minutes. coming in to help? <laughs> the adults are talking. What do you mean? It's supposed to come here. What are you talking about, dude? I think. Okay. It's supposed to come here, mm -hmm. and we're supposed to get a market in the mountain. <laughs> okay. So the, the coaster is going to be built on stilts over Elpen? It's going to be, yes. Oh my God. Where's Jake when I need him for real? To quote Brendan. A ride manufacturer will do whatever they need to build a ride anywhere. And we got yelled at. If you ask Jake, like, Brendan was mad this one time because we were actually, like, he just makes things up and then goes along with it. And then if, it, if we disagree with it, he gets mad. I wouldn't say that. I would say no, that. No, you were yes. you were arguing. So the no. argument was that, that no, that Wonderland wouldn't build a coaster because there's a pathway near it. And I was like... No, 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 no. Do we you need, remember we this We need now? Jake to confirm that I'm right because you said this to us at least 15,000, 16,000 times. No. Yes. No. Because yes. my argue, my counter argument, Jasmine, back me up here. She knows I'm Would right. Would a coaster manufacturer not I, be able it, to make anything do it? This is true. Would they not? Be, I mean, they can. They can do anything you want. It's about how much money you're ready to spend. I, 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 I exactly. Say if you go to Hershey Park, you'll see, like, Jake, I'm sure you see, they build coasters on top of each other over there, quite literally. Exactly, mm -hmm. so they can build roller coasters on stilts over Alpine. What's the problem? <laughs> okay, but your counter-argument was making me sound crazy for thinking that they could build a coaster anywhere. You're, yes, you're just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, my thoughts, oh, my counter-argument, because I can't give my thoughts. 
um, my counter argument is essentially, let's say Wonderland needed to get track into the mountain. I've made this counter argument since the beginning. They have to carry track sideways on that um, telecarrier, right? So when a telecarrier is carrying a track segment, they have to bring it in sideways. Now, the only alternative to that is if a flatbed were to arrive with track and it were to just go right into the park, into the mountain through shipping and receiving. So that's the only counter argument that would demolish my complete argument, which makes sense because they rushed the shipping and receiving they didn't maintenance dock. They did that for Yukon, though, did they? No, they just. Is Yukon it. built in a mountain? Yeah, but they, they, I'm saying they never brought a piece of track. With from, a telecarrier, they did. No, I'm saying from a flatbed directly into the park. It was always flatbed to storage, no, because, offload onto storage, yeah, and they it would bring in storage. If you remember, they would bring three pieces of track a day into the they park. They would bring whatever opening. fit on that flatbed. Yeah, but no, they would only bring, yeah, three pieces a day. At most, if you're lucky, you got three <laughs> I remember pieces. The truck drivers. Yeah. I do too. We were good friends with the truck drivers. <laughs> There's photos of me hanging off the track. I remember laughing at you guys from being in the Smith car. <laughs> <laughs> Being what? I feel like there they are when I was on video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we weren't hanging out yet? No, because not I really, I no. To ride rides. Yeah. I'm like, I'm we wouldn't have been hanging out with Surya yet at the time. Um, I didn't get broken up with. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just realized how deep that was. So the counter argument would be that that third tunnel is for track pieces to go in sideways because it's a pretty wide cut. So it's, there's three arguments to it. It's either to carry track pieces in, which I think shipping and receiving was rushed for that. Okay. So think about shipping and receiving. Well, that was the first thing they built to get things into the mountain. Right? Um, secondly, let's say, okay, third tunnel, it's not for bringing track pieces in. What else could it be for? Well, there's the option that it is wide enough for a two-person seater train to go in and out, especially if they're able to widen it to the right a little more, which they are. They can widen it a couple feet. They have up until the end of Thunder Runs. <laughs> what? Pissing off Jake that it's working. <laughs> um, Didn't they already pour concrete in that tunnel, though? Nope. It's the only tunnel that has zero work done to it. Just a little gravel stone so the tires don't slip going in. Or the ride's coming out of it. Just one way. And then it's heading back a different way. I think I talk about that. We have a whole slide for that. What I want to go into now. The misconception with how much space is in the mountain. So let's say that you spread. Uh, uh, what is that word? Uh, I don't know. Something that I think was a thing maybe five, six, seven years ago. Used to be funny. <clears throat> what does it mean? Like YouTube Shorts. I have no. Oh. It's like a YouTube Short kind of person thing to like. Um, but nonetheless, the space in the mountain. So I drew up a really rough draft, guys. This is not like fully accurate, um, but I can guarantee you that this is a really good representation as to the area that Wonderland has to work with. Now imagine you're in the basement where these two tunnels all go down to. Okay. You have a really big red section in the middle of this workable space that Guardian's drop track takes up. Um, it is impossible for the coaster to go through it, over it, um, but it can only go around it. And it is really hard for it to go around it. But I wanted to show you guys because I want to show you <clears throat> how hard it would be to fit elements and a station in here, if that makes sense. So if you were to visualize launch tunnel number one being utilized as a launch and an Immelman coming out of the top of the mountain, how? Because you have to um, remember that Guardian Station's right there above the tunnel, right? So it can't launch and come up right away. Uh, as soon as it exits the tunnel, right? Mm -hmm. It has to go past Guardian Station, which then brings it closer to... Um, like, you have to remember, it has to line up, like, perfectly straight, too. It can't, like, do, like, a turn and then, like, come up if it's launching and it's an intense coaster. 
So that's why I drew this. I wanted you guys to visualize if it were to enter the mountain, what kind of stuff would it be doing? Jasmine, what do you think? Based off of the the really artistic and professional drawing yeah, that are... That is, that, is, that is not the word I'd use to describe that. Yeah, you're like full-blown <laughs> CAD markup here. Um, <laughs> I think it's more likely... Again, this is also my bias because I want a little like dark ride section in here. Um, not gonna have the station in in the mountain. I think logistics wise, just like you said, it would be really difficult. They would have to do a lot of major work to, you know, make sure that there's space for it in there. Um, and it's like also not the most sensible thing when you look at logistics of how crowd the crowd flows through the park. Uh, there's already a lot of sort of, that's what I'm looking for, where everyone kind of like funnels into one smaller pathway around the mountain. Um, so like crowd flow wise, I think we would have mayhem <laughs> if the station is in or around the mountain just because of the way traffic moves around the park. Um, so I think it's likely to be somewhere else if we are using sky skyflyer skyrider i keep saying it wrong but if we are using that plot of land to me that's the one that makes the most sense for a station because the like j again just the way crowds move there's room for sorry my dog is totally trying to get in this stream right now um, um there's there's totally room for a crowd to flow around there and there's room for a station there's room for a queue all of that stuff you have to take into consideration um, and I just feel like it would be, it would be wild if they could fit all that into the mountain and have the coaster partially go through it. So I would like to see station somewhere else and the, what space we do have in the mountain used towards theming and having some kind of like little dark ride element. And yes, Benny is trying to make an appearance. So we'll just, we'll just introduce him. Hi. Say hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. And now we're going to ha not have him take over the stream. That that's enough. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, what do you think um, about spacing in the mountain? I mean, there is a lot of space in there. There's also a lot of obstacles in there. So it, de it really depends in my opinion on the model of ride like okay let's just say if it's a b&m wing coaster which i don't think a b&m wing coaster i don't think a wing train is going in there but if it is a wing train there's only really one place it can go and that's just straight up like right, it, when like, it like right when it enters it yeah. needs to go up um so i i don't think that's gonna happen i don't think b&m's trains can handle that <laughs> no offense to b&m <laughs> um if it's a smaller ride, you know, like a Zamperla or Premier or Vacoma or, or literally anything else than a 20-foot wide wing train, I think there is, you know, depending, provided it's going a little bit slower, so you're not flying in the mountain at 120 kilometers an hour because then you really can't do much other than go straight. Um, can we know, can we just mute the people that are spamming well, these I, weird uh, words? I'm working on okay. If, oh, my leg just... Chad's going through. rogue. Um, <laughs> if... You know, let's say the, the ride starts in the mountain or it's going a little bit slower, maybe 40, 50 kilometers an hour going around some like S curves or something. I think there is quite a bit of things that can be done, again, depending on how wide the ride vehicles are and how wide the track is. So I, I think it really just depends on what, what model of ride it is. But if you are, you know, Again, not going super fast. I, I, I think you can weave around most of the obstacles if it's planned out properly. Except Guardian's Drop Track, that big center red blob. That That is immovable, and you can't go through it. You've seen that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like they've done so tours in the mountain. Oh, yeah. um, does that mean that your theory is somewhat aligned with Krega and that the queue would be in the mountain? I, th um, I mean... Like, most of Guardian's queue was built to be in the mountain. I don't know why they don't use that extended part. But, um, yeah, I think there's possibility that the queue could be in the mountain. I think it would be really cool. It would be kind of like, well, I've never been to Universal or Disney, but it would be more like that, right? Like, how they do a more indoor thing. 
And then they yeah. could do like I could see and... like again going back to the mummy. That queue is sort of stacked. Like there's a part where you go upstairs, and so they're able to use more space vertically like that. Mm. I could I could see it being possible. Yeah. So from my understanding, why I don't think a station and a queue line would be in the mound is the reason they don't use the extended queue on Guardian anymore is flooding issues. Um, <laughs> Sounds like the mount. <laughs> The mound is a really bad infrastructure. Hopefully the park doesn't sound the same. <laughs> it's a really bad infrastructure. <laughs> um, it's okay, got... you're shading people from like, what, 50, 60 years ago? It's That's fine. true. It's yeah. not their fault. <laughs> that could have been my grandfather. Uh, well, can we, uh, can we ask him some questions? I have no, we can. <laughs> okay. We cannot. <laughs> um, it's, it floods. It's got a lot of dust. There's not good air ventilation. Um, there's a lot of structural and um, infrastructure issues with the mountain. And so housing, emergency exits, all this jazz just seems like a, a, a nightmare. And I think that's where, I, I'm not saying it's not possible. I'm not saying it's not possible. But I think Extreme Sky Flyer, like the hydraulic line. We're going to get to that in a second. So we'll talk about that. We won't talk about that yet. But even still, think about a high thrill ride. Like, I mean... Well, you're not blasting in there at 100 plus kilometers an hour. That's for sure. Not hitting something. <laughs> so when people are really excited about this second launch, if it's the second launch, you do have very little options once you enter this space. And many of us who have, I can't say what, but if you know what I'm referencing right now. I honestly have no clue what you're talking about. I was completely zoned out for the last five minutes. Can, like we, can we mute our mics for a second? <laughs> well, I got scared for a second. I have. So now with what you know, picture a big high thrill coaster maneuvering. It would be, have to be something that's... You need a mic. It would have to be something that's <laughs> like... If it were to be shoved in there, and I'm not saying it's, it's a possibility, but it would have to be something like... Uh, that's a good wording. Like Maverick. Like something like that that's, that can whip you around in that sort of aspect. Otherwise, yeah. you can't be that whipped is. around by many other rides there designs. There is the possibility to do some tighter elements. You know, like there. that. But otherwise, you can't really be whipped around in that crammed of an area. It's not that big of a space as yeah. much as you'd like to believe it is. got to remember, it's a frame and paper mache. And there's not much space outside the frame. I think it really depends on how fast you're going, like, in there. Like, if it's a launch, you're not going to launch and start doing all these twists and turns in there. there. I don't think there's enough room. But if it's just a straight section of track, that's the launch inside the mountain, and then it launches you out of the mountain, then you can go as fast as you want and do whatever you want then, right, when you're in open space. Yeah. Anyone curious about... Um Wonder Mountain's Guardian's transfer track section removed and not being reinstalled with the ride testing? Remove the rest of the ride, too, <laughs> while you're <laughs> Am I inserting <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> what? Maybe we can be hopeful. <laughs> Who would miss it? Let's be honest. Oh, I'm not saying it's being removed. Think about it, though. No, so I'm the transfer wishing track that section I'm inside the mountain. I'm not saying it is. I'm just putting it out there. Why Guardian I... doesn't have a transfer in the mountain, does it? It does. It has two. Not everyone knows about that, too. It has one upstairs, has one downstairs. Oh, they never showed us that on the tours. Really? No, they didn't. There's a whole uh, a video online where Peter takes a university, I think, or an American coaster group. It's one of the two, and you can see it. I don't yes, think Ryan is true. There is There can always be more holes added. Um I, well, we just saw three appear out of nowhere. So, like, well, the I mean? third one came out of nowhere. I remember being in Discord and I'm like flying and I'm like, I'm like, why that digger looks like it's like in the mountain, and then I'm like, it's in the mountain. <laughs> um, but I'm trying to think of how to word this. Um, there's a hundred percent work going on in the mountain that we're not aware of. Yeah, you wouldn't even be able to see it at all. It'd be on the basement floor. The basement basement, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I think I have a shot for you guys. Oh, you show them, Brendan. Oh, <laughs> Guardian construction. 
Yes, I remember this. Ooh, uh, That's so um, funny. Did you know they started construction on Guardian oh, at the end Jared, of Jared, you have someone you can reach out to about that. Also, I don't think your account's banned from the Discord. Yeah, I think you left. <laughs> um, but, um, Jake, you don't have to delete his... Oh, okay, I thought Jake deleted it. Um, mountain construction. Everyone thought this picture was real. This was 2025. Oh, my God, the stirrup. No, oh, my goodness. Um, this is Guardian being built. And what you're looking at right now is Guardian's drop track main footer right there. I actually learned a new term. It's called a caisson, isn't it? A caisson, yeah. Yeah. That sounds not the son- like The term. sono tube, when it's in the ground, then it's a caisson. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, someone, in, someone in construction taught me that. Um, so, yeah, that is the main um, footing for that. But what I want to show you guys is I'm going to move Patreon chat for a second. All right. What you're looking at. So do you know when I'm talking about Guardian's drop track wall? Do you see Thunder Run's staircase right there? Do you see Thunder Run's exit, everyone? It's behind the excavator up in the air a little bit. And you see that little thin sliver of concrete wall that's about to be built upward? Well, that's a wall that goes to the ceiling, (laughs) essentially. It goes up and over. Um, So the third tunnel, by the way, is just behind the excavator, just off to the left of the, um, that little ramp built into the wall there, Thunder Run's exit. So imagine, like, how is Wonderland gonna get from tunnel number one, which is behind us in this photo, essentially, through a wall to tunnel three? It's almost impossible, right? It's, it's literally impossible. So it's gotta do maneuvers. It has two options, which again, we'll go back to that. It's got a, it has one of two pathways to travel. Now, coasters do have switch tracks now, so it can use switch tracks to utilize a way in and out, and obviously the PLC system, right? Is that the right PLC, way? PLC, yeah. PLC, oh my god! What does it stand for, Brendan? Yeah, Craig, what does it stand for? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an enthusiast. I don't run a, an enthusiast Wait, 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 wait let me... Channel. Um, pneumatic? <laughs> Is it programmable or pneumatic? Programmable. Launch control, no? Logic. Logic controller. Logic oh, logic controller. controller. Programmable logic controller. That's what controller. I said. Yeah, that's what you said. <laughs> I hear LC and I think hard. It's made up of a series of computers, relays, pneumatics, and um, hydraulics. A vertical launch could work, but you have, to, you have to remember Guardian is in the way, guys. Look at the tunnel. Maintenance tunnel one. Maintenance tunnel one. Launch tunnel one. Look Guardian is literally in the way. Um, the only benefit this has is um, the footings for Guardian in that stationary and turnout do not go to the basement. It's built on the slab. So it has the ability to go under, but it is heading right for a place that it cannot pass through. So like Surya said, it has only one option to go up. Align Guardian's track design with the path that this coaster would have to go up. And there's, there's, like n- there's no option to go up, right? It would have to, like... Yeah, that's true. It couldn't launch vertically in the middle of Thunder Run. But it's still, I mean, it could do, like, again, a coaster no, manufacturer. in the middle of Thunder Run is Herman. Yeah. They wouldn't get rid of Herman. Yeah. The mountain is brighter on the inside. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I have to be really careful here. See, that's a cool thing. Volcano the Blast Coaster relocated. You, you know, um... When that ride opened, when King's Dominion built that ride, that mountain was never designed for that ride. It was for another attraction. I can't remember what, but it was like the Lazy River boat attraction. Um, I don't know. If anyone knows what I'm talking about, if anyone knows the name of the original ride, please let me know. But Volcano was never designed for that ride, so they completely retrofitted everything to build that. 
I didn't know that. A really good question to ask you guys right now is... Smurf Mountain. Yes, Smurf Mountain. Look up Smurf Mountain. It was really cool. A really good question to ask you guys right now is, you've heard me talk about a change of plans. Craig, you have to keep your mouth shut here. Well, that sucks. Well, that's okay. I've been quiet anyway. <laughs> uh, no, he has to keep his mouth shut. Oh. oh. Um, I also ask you and Jasmine, do you think there was a change of plan, a big change of plans that's moved everything around? Yeah, Jasmine, you can go. I think so. I mean, the way things have happened so quickly, and I just, there's been a few hints that kind of lean towards that. And I think it's very, very possible, especially with Skyflyers, that coming down so quickly and without an announcement happening until it was, like, done. Um, I think that kind of, makes me lean like yes there were some last minute decisions some kind of expansion of this project or like addition onto the project or something that would because like normally they would let you know like oh this is this ride's last season like sky oh my god sky rider what was the stand-up one sky rider. all the names are jumbled up in my head right now but we had like everybody had their like last ride moment on that there was no such um forward notice for this like, like you guys said, we just kind of all woke up one day and there's holes in the mountain and like they're taking a ride down. <laughs> like Grace kind of had to, it seemed like she had to play catch up with what was happening on social media rather than being ahead of it, which tells me that there was some quick decisions going on. I guess the one thing we can confirm is that Skyrider, Skyflyer, oh my goodness. Skyflyer was a last minute removal. Can you vouch for that? I can vouch for that. Skyflyer was not planned to get removed not in the yet. not yet. Not yet. Um, it was a last minute decision. The park did wish that they could have done last rides. So we can confirm that. And you'll learn that at a later date. Documentary. What? <laughs> Documentary. Oh. <laughs> um so what do you think? Do you think this is last minute? I lost my train of thought there. For last a minute. Um, again, I, I personally can't say for 100%, but what I can say is, you know, when people say, like, you know, these things are set in stone, nothing is set in stone, right? Like, the perfect example actually did happen to Wonderland with um, Valraven. You know, there was there was markings on the ground. They, they had everything ready to go. And it's been documented. There are old YouTube videos, random videos, like by the water park, that path was already slated to be moved in 2015, guys. 2015, it was supposed to open in 2016. And in 2015, you know, they, they Cedar, Cedar Fair is like, no, we can't, we, we can't go to Wonderland. It has to go to Cedar Point because they just did the renovations on the hotel. They lost the Golden Ticket Award for Best Amusement Park in the World. That went to Europa Park, so they needed to do something. And they thought building, um, you know, Valraven or whatever it was going to be called at Wonderland there would have been the ideal thing. So that right there is proof that even within, you know, within months of breaking ground, things can change. And, and you know, not just small things like $30 million investments can change like that. And it's not like another company stealing it from us, right? It's within Cedar Fair. So they have the right to last minute say, hey, you know what? No, 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 no. Wonderland doesn't get that or King's Dominion doesn't get that or whatever. Like they can move things wherever they want within the company whenever they want. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's very possible that last minute changes have been made. Yeah. I think the original plan was to obviously have a, a wing coaster station in International Show Place. And it would turn into that maintenance tunnel one and launch up out of the mound and do a really small King's Dominion layout. I think we're really lucky. I think we were going to get a really small wing coaster. Like, that was powerful, but, like, a quick little two train. I honestly think they were thinking two trains. Um, and I think, I think there was a budget increase because Cedar Fair has a really big plan for Wonderland that I've, I've been saying for years. <laughs> And I think that they're finally finding their identity in terms of bringing almost like the history back to Wonderland. And we saw all the survey. The entire park's been surveyed at this point. 
essentially. Like it's it's been surveyed. So there's obviously some sort of like massive plan. We know that Wonderland's working on a Splashworks expansion behind the scenes. They admitted that themselves at the Ace event. Um, and it's it's crazy that it was so it looks like it was so last minute again what what looks last minute to us can be the the change of plans happened a year ago right these surveys could have been scheduled. it's a third party company that does these surveys by the way it's not wonderland so these surveys could have been for all we know could have been whipped up years ago like a year ago and uploaded to an up automatic upload and the park just forgot to like you know um so that survey it could went also out. be too it could also be too that like Oftentimes, when it comes to long-term planning, like when they're making five-year to ten-year plans, they could have like plan A, plan B, plan C, depending on what their budget ends up totaling out to. Because, you know, they might have to go get approval for a loan. They might have to get approval from the, you know, big wigs up top of Cedar Fair slash now also Six Flags. Um, so it could be that, like you said, we were originally looking at a certain type of coaster, a wing coaster that was slated here to go through this part of the mountain and whatever and maybe they were like okay well if then if we get this budget then we look at this size coaster this type of layout this type of whatever and then if we get a bigger budget then we look at this option whatever so like you said these things are very likely planned out in advance but which of the options they go with might not have been solidified until they solidify their budget and then things can move quickly yeah, um, which brings me to how last minute this project, if it did change so very, very last minute, which manufacturers would be open with not many projects on their conveyor belt um, to be able to whip up a last minute design for Wonderland? Speculation. <laughs> From here. <laughs> Oh, um, um. <laughs> that's not me saying anything, guys. Don't worry. Speculation. It's a speculation channel. Uh, for me, I don't know. I, I that like Americans? that's tough because it but. also depends on the size of team of any one manufacturer. Like you might think they're too busy, but maybe they're not. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's true. So. Um, oh, I should have added this slide in. Okay, so we're going to open up a whole can of worms. But I do want to say, um, with a, an, a counter argument to the premiere, because you guys, I, it's too late. I put the video out. It's too late. I put the premiere video out. It's too late. Can't take now it back. Now we're all like, oh, it's premiere. <laughs> um, the argument, you know, premiere, blah, 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 too late. They went with an American manufacturer that doesn't have many projects that could be blah, 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 blah. But the counter argument is when Wonderland did that with a wing coaster in mind, they still went to other manufacturers and had other designs whipped up. That is a confirmed process that every park does. When they want a project, they approach as many manufacturers as possible price-wise, Design wise and all that, they don't just go up to B and M and they're like, "Well, we want this." Yeah. <laughs> um, they might have done that for a little while there. Yes, right. <laughs> it seemed like it. Like, I mean, for a dive coaster, they're not going to Intamin and being like, "Can you build us one of those tiny little things?" You know, um, fun fact that Millennium Force was supposed to be B and M. I had heard that rumor. Was it from you? Yeah, yeah. Over 300 feet. Uh, yeah. B and M said they wouldn't go over three hundred feet. Heard that wouldn't too. go over ninety I miles an somewhere. hour. Can you imagine a BM back then that tall? A &M giga, yeah, because their tallest was Apollo's chariot. With the at problems that time. they're having now, what problem? The, uh, oh my God, think about that though for a second. With the problems they're having with today's technology, can you imagine back then? Well, honestly, it probably would have worked better. I think that's why they didn't do it. Um, so, um, what was I saying? Okay. Craig is taking you a little break. Craig, sorry. Yeah, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? What conversation? I lost my train of thought. Uh, uh, oh, manufacturers. manufacturers. So, yes. Wonderland would have had other manufacturers planned. But, again, the whole idea was a blast coaster coming out of the top of the mountain. So. Well, that was one of the ideas. That was one of the ideas. That's true. So. We think that's still possible. We just, you know, they're not going to drill a hole in the top of the mountain yet. What if it's on the side of the mountain? That makes more sense. I think anything is going to ruin that mountain. And I think that's what I think that <laughs> might have been one of their thought ruined. processes. It really is, though. It really is. The front of it's cute and all, but the back of it, it's like me. <laughs> um, 
Let's get to... I think I did already about the other manufacturers and... Oh, King's Dominion! So let's say, let's say Wonderland still is going to work with BNM on this project. Okay, let's say that. Let's say maybe the bridge isn't as burnt as the rumblings are hearing out there. I think that could be a whole podcast episode, actually. Really? Yeah. There's a lot I want to say on that. Really? Yeah. Okay, maybe we can hold it to next week. But we'll touch on it a little bit. So King's Dominion, I don't know if you've seen their construction update as of yesterday. I have not. They have uh, so many footings done. Done. Poured. For that tiny little wing coaster. So, but but just keep in mind too, with King's Dominion, they have a different calendar than they, they do. do. They open a month and a half earlier than us. They do. Um, it's a small coaster, though. Yukon uh, do, didn't do even have this. Do we know it's a small coaster for sure? Yeah, the yeah the blueprints, like the actual city blueprints, leaked. Um. Sorry. I think. What was the question again? Um, B and M. Something about B and M. What did I ask? Oh, why are they starting so early? Yeah, why is King's Dominion starting so early? Thank you. Probably because they don't want to fall behind. That's what I would have to guess. They don't want to fall behind, and their season is quite a bit different than ours, right? Like, you know, once they go to full time operations, they won't be able to do any work. And if you think about it, so. Full. I don't know when full time starts for them. It may start late earlier than us, but let's say they go full time at the end of May or mid May, oh. right? Then you have to stop doing construction. So from May, sorry, oh, from sure from May till Labor Day, you can't do anything in the park, and then you're only limited to weekends. Wait, why? Because it's all behind a construction wall. Wait, is it? Everybody yeah. thinks I went to go vape. That's yeah. so disappointing. I quit vaping. I didn't lie. You actually didn't lie. I went pee. Oh, okay. What the hell? Um, <laughs> wait, where is the construction? Is it at the mountains old area? There. It's near... Um, is it near I-305? The bobsled and I-305 and all that. It's in a field. Like, it's it's not in the way of anything. They have construction walls up everywhere blocking it. Oh, they, they have teasers on the, the wall. Clock. Yeah, they can work around the clock. They have started... This is early for a small wing coaster. Isn't it just two trains as well? I have no idea. It's two trains, right, guys? That manufacturer that they're working with? B&M. So I had a theory... Oh, no. Never mind. I'll hold my thought. <laughs> <laughs> so B&M has a lot of projects right now, right? And it's five coasters max that that Clearmount factory can work on. I think Claremont can do four, but I'm pretty sure they have fabrication somewhere else, too. Okay. So let's say that B&M's rushing this project. That's why you see, because Wonderlands will then be up next, because it is a month and a half later. That That's would exactly explain what I was getting at too. I'm like, mm. the really early construction at King's Dominion. So how much? Well, I guess if it's a small one, they don't need to worry about manufacturing track, like a lot of track. What other projects do they have for 2025? What else are they manufacturing for? I don't know 2025. I'm the wrong person to ask about that. But I know they have they have all, definitely over four right now in their portfolio that are being finished. But a lot of their track is done being manufactured, I believe. Like Penguin Trek, the Bush Gardens um, invert, family invert. The good thing with those are, though, it's not like... Okay, it's not like a giga coaster. It's not like a hyper coaster. Like these aren't these rides aren't five thousand feet long. They don't have one hundred and fifty plus track segments. Yeah. Right. What if Wonderland really went with a two seater sit down B and M launch coaster? That would be extremely Inverse. disappointing. You would find that. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. So, out of all the B and M launch coasters, Thunderbird <laughs> is my favorite. Or a B and M launch. I, I've done. The, the four in North America, I think Thunderbird is the best because it has the launch. And Thunderbird is only five, right? And it's a shorter ride. Holiday World specifically wanted it shorter like because it's a smaller park, right? And, and in fact, on their media day uh, at, their, at the um, Hollywood Nights, they specifically said they had the option to do eight trains. However, that would require a lot more power to launch it, but they could still do it. And Holiday World said no. They acknowledged that they don't get that long of a crowd. So it's unnecessary. Wonderland, however... 
you know, we pull in four and a half million in attendance a year. So, yeah, the ride would be cool, I think, but it would be extremely disappointing to see them purposely go with a lower capacity ride when B&M has proven that they could do like gatekeeper size trains, that they could do full capacity rides the way that Wonderland would want it. So that's where my disappointment is. So wait, from. Penguin Trek, the B&M sit down can't do eight cars? No, I'm, I'm, I am I'm don't know how many cars. They can probably do as many cars as they want, but I'm, say, I'm saying why would, why would Wonderland want a five, like a five car train when they could do more. But wait, what wasn't the argument against? Wait, I. I no, you, 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 you said, you said, um, how does that make you feel if Wonderland gets like a, a the small, two, the two? Oh, but I didn't. Like, it could be how many cars do they want it to be? But oh, I thought I, 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 I was saying B and M sit down versus a B and M wing, or whatever. Like, what if they go with a B and M sit down? That's launched? Yeah. What's wrong with that? No, no nothing. I, I, I think I would take that over. Because those trains were gorgeous. And they can Did do tighter maneuvers. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, I'm just presenting a lot of ideas. Because um, am I the only one? Chat. Chat. Guys, I need your help here. Because this is a theory I've been running just for the last like couple of days. Why is King's Dominion... So I actually thought technology was breaking there. Um, why is King's Dominion rushing their coaster? Because that's rushing, in my opinion. Am I wrong? Is it not rushing? Help they, me out here. What if they go back to being all year around and they want something that can run? Oh, in the that months? park's the last park that's ever going back to yeah, all year. They don't make mm. any money. They have better rides than we do. And they still make no money. No, but even for one month earlier than us, this is really early for that scale of a coaster. Why are you so quiet? Did something happen? Can you can you guys hear us? I think chat's talking to each other there. Oh, okay. <laughs> It could also just be if there are other projects at other parks. This doesn't mean Wonderland, but yeah. I do find it really early for a small scale launched wing coaster. Someone said oh I guess it's gone. Said something about I three oh five. I three oh five is getting a retheme by the looks of it. Not to a, a tiger like people thought, to a cheetah or something. What is it? A jaguar. A jaguar. People figured out the theme is a jaguar. One of those cats. Because that's what's on the um mural. Yeah. I mean, hey, it's cool. It's better than Thunder Striker. <laughs> Let's go ride Thunder well, I think you were making fun of Yukon Striker for a second. Thunder Striker. What's Thunder Striker? Um, <laughs> garbage. <laughs> yeah. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, I just wanted to show you guys some Wonder Mountain. So there is an electrical room in the mountain, and this was it being built for Wonder Mountain's Guardian. And then the Wonder Mountain Guardian construction for big parts of the ride. So if you look closely, it's just the footing for the drop track that's down there and the walls to protect the ride area from the rest of the mountain. I have learned that they have to um, insulate ride sections um, in that mountain. So when they build a ride section, they have to close it off to the mountain because the mountain is not actually a protected space. Um, there are weather that gets in there. There's all sorts of, you know, animals and stuff that get in there. Yeah, little, little enthusiasts running Creatures. around. Little enthusiasts <laughs> running around. Yeah. So, yeah. I personally see somebody climb that mountain that should not have climbed that mountain. On TikTok? In my, in front of my face. Remember the guy? Were you with us? He lost his phone. On oh, Vortex. yeah. And they got kicked We're, out. Yeah, and he climbed up the mountain. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. No, he climbed onto the mountain and then <laughs> up the path. Oh my God. And security came. He literally he climbed up the mountain. I wish I was joking. I, I posted on TikTok, actually. You guys can go watch the video. Yeah, yeah go find it. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. Now let's talk about the really confusing... What the... What the Leviathan is going on 
with this layout. What could they possibly do um, for a layout? Did you measure the distances between extreme? Like the most, I guess, eastern end of extreme's plot to the mountain one way? But it wouldn't be a straight launch section. No, no, no. I, I just want to know distance. Like, because if it's 3,000 feet one way and the coaster has to go there and back, that's over 6,000 feet long. And I can't see Wonderland doing anything like that. You want me to measure it right now? Okay, podcast, take a chill pill for a sec. I think I had measured it. Let me see if I can pull it up. Or maybe, I yeah, maybe, in, maybe, maybe let Discord a few weeks so back. It doesn't... No, it's okay. They can still hear us, they can see us and everything. They don't even know what I'm doing right now. We're just on Google <laughs> Maps and we're going to do um, quick measuring using. Google Maps measuring tool. Okay, so for example, I think this is where the station's going because you brought up that point. Why would they remove those the specific footings. things? Yeah. To here? Or to the middle? Do it to the middle. From Skyflyer to the. Oh, that's where it? the tunnel 200 meters. Is, is like 215. Okay, let's just say if it's 250, that's. That's less than a thousand feet one way. That's it. Oh yeah, it's definitely possible then. Yeah. So would you say it's impossible to go to Alpen? Three hundred meters. No, it's it's not. It's, let's say let's say. Feet right at the bottom is a thousand feet. Now it's thirteen hundred feet. One way. Now That's a straight line feet. though. Yeah. Obviously, it would do maneuvers. 23. Okay, yeah, you add an extra 1,000 feet minimum for maneuvers. That's actually pretty short, then. That's only 3,000 feet. So, with that measurement... Okay, it's very possible, then, yeah. Look at how excited Surya is getting. I have to see the... <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I thought it would be more. <clears throat> so, Surya... Now, now I'm hoping it's a little more than just 3,000 <laughs> Um God, I'm a bad engineer. My distances are way off. I'm just looking at my screenshots that I took of the measurements. So from the edge of the mountain to by the fly, it was like 115 meters. And from that same edge of the mountain to Sky Flyer's plot, it was like 215. And then I had compared that to both um, Velocicoaster and Guardians of the Galaxy. And it was comparable to both. Yeah. I do think with recent interactions and stuff that this is going to this is going to be Wonderland's premier kind of like it, it doesn't mean it's going to be better than Leviathan but you know like how they said Snoopy's Racing Railway was kind of like really important to them I feel like this project is Wonderland's baby based off of Hold on one second, hold on one second. Can I mute ourselves for a sec? Lip readers in the chat. <laughs> Are there lip readers in the chat? That'd be scary. They're trying. I'm in a lot of trouble if there's lip readers in the chat. <laughs> oh, because, okay. And someone's like, why are you muting? Because some things are not allowed to be said. Trust me. Um, yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to word this then. I'll just say this. How do I word this? Um, there, well, there's a lot of reasons why, like we were saying earlier of like the last minute ride removal, like them, you know, it, it's seeming like Grace is catch, playing catch up with certain things when it comes to announcing them publicly. To me, that's clues that this is like something they're keeping quiet until they absolutely have to talk about it to the public. Yeah. I, uh, they definitely are keeping a close eye on, like, everything, and, yeah, um, so, in terms of direction and flow, don't worry, they don't much more than we do, jeez, look, he tried to insult us, and he couldn't even read, no, I love him, he's a good, he, he's a good guy, I like him, don't worry, don't worry. I like him. Don't worry. 
<laughs> Your guys are right. We know nothing. Don't um, even worry about it. There's nothing to lip read here. <laughs> it's Chess. Um, no, he's a good guy. Trust me. Um, so with the black coaster layout, um, you have the option of heading into the mound and blasting out the top and heading back. So black is one option. Oh, my God. Then with the measurements we just did, that's like 1,500 feet. Yeah, it's a really small coaster. Terrible. But very in line with what, say, let's say, Premier, right? Is that a little helix? Oh, I did. Ignore the actual <laughs> elements. Ignore the actual <laughs> elements. It's <little> <laughs> <That's> a question <laughs> mark, isn't it? Um, it was a question mark. Blue is another area. That's not a layout, by the way. Blue is another area the coaster could head out to. And then green is like uh, the crazy. Because I originally was like, okay, how does this coaster get back? You know what I mean? Thinking of multiple options. They're not going to send this thing right in front of the mountain. Absolutely not. That'd be so stupid. That would kill everything. That would you kill front gate it. So you're you're not too, too crazy of an idea there with the green line. Yeah, the green line takes it back down the other. So it kind of like hugs International Street. That'd actually be really cool. I'm not getting kind of close to Leviathan that would be really there. Cool. You know, it's the claiming its territory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Leviathan. Getting Wonderland. close to the garbage. I don't see Yukon anywhere. Um, no, I think Wonderland had a short coaster planned, um, to fit in with our pretty big expansion plan. I think Wonderland's star expansion plan was supposed to be the GCI in Whitewater Canyon, truthfully. I think that was Wonderland's big, like... Like Zambezi Zinger? Yeah, like, with that massive themed yeah. area. I think that was Wonderland's next big thing. And the wing coaster was a good coaster, but still filler until then. Which sounds weird to say, because normally... The little coasters are the filler, and the big coasters aren't, but uh, the two-operation launched wing coaster seemed like filler to me. And they are going theming heavy, so if that was not going to be as much of a you know, whole-themed area, not, not telling as much of a story, then yes, the family option that is a big-themed area would have been a bigger deal to them. But it kind of seems like somebody showed up and dropped a bomb on them like we're gonna do that but huge <laughs> pink mountain what are your thoughts so far i know your adhd is making you lost, lost. yeah i, I feel bad i can always tell when we rant too much craig gets lost because he has like adhd right Life going on. <laughs> I'm here. um so what, do you, what okay layout where do you think this coaster could go back how do you think it's going to travel back once it gets into the mountain because I'll say this. I'll say this. Jasmine, back me up here. Okay, you guys You guys want you want to hear about some of our secrets? Jasmine, would you say it's pretty confident, that we're pretty confident at this point, and Sarah and, and Craiga, that this coaster is in the mountain and going to be in the mountain? I mean, yeah. If I were to make an educated guess, I would say the mountain on the inside right now probably looks kind of similar to that photo of Wonder Mountain's Guardian construction we were looking at. That's just my guess. That photo was from 2014 <laughs> of Guardians putting what the Guardians drop track. Well, that was a great way to word that. <laughs> Jasmine's the Jake. <laughs> was there what drop track? Photos? Listen, I'm just throwing out guesses here. I don't know anything. <laughs> oh, um, I can't look at the camera right now. Yeah. I'm gonna make it go away. I'm just I'm saying, I years. think there's hella construction going on in there, more than what we might know. And how fast they're moving! Like we've got three tunnels in like two days. Come on. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely there's definitely stuff going on in the mountain. Prediction speculation channel. Um, and <laughs> the coaster is a hundred percent going in the mountain, based off of our prediction here speculation we all just think and assume we're all making guesses just bottom line just so everyone's clear we are speculating we are just looking at what we have seen so far and making educated guesses based on that but i don't think they're making three tunnels and then not doing anything inside the mountain that's all i'm saying yeah no that's yeah um guardian is a good ride Fly the drone into the mountain. I can tell you my drone wouldn't make it halfway through the park before losing reception and falling out of the sky. <laughs> or battery. Every 10 minutes, it's like, oh, I got to go charge the drone. Oh, my God. Just bring a car battery with you. There's a reason I bought a drone with, like, um, but, um, 
Yeah, so it, again, the path of travel is really confusing, but there is a storyline forming. Now that the mountain in Amusement Insiders and Friends and Stuff's prediction is going to be used for the coaster, and... Okay, Surya, this is where you shine, I think. So, recent discoveries, hydraulic line, heading towards the sky jacks that would lift the riders up and down on Extreme Sky Flyer. It's been exposed. It's not been exposed in its furthest thing. It's exposed right here in this That's large flooding. footing location. I want you to comment on what you talked to me about, about why they would need to remove these footings, because of another reason they could keep them technically, and then explain why they might be exposing a section of the hydraulic line. Well, I mean, they could have just very well buried the footing if it wasn't in a place of importance, especially for a footing like this, like how deep it was and how massive it was. You know, that cost quite a bit of money. Um, what, what did I explain to you? <laughs> About the footing? Yeah, so you you were saying like, um, if it was, for example, um, a flat ride or even just a coaster support, it could have used that footing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if, if that was for, like, because parks reuse footings all the time, right? Like, not reuse them in the sense where, oh, you know, I'm just going to report, like, just put a whole new column on it and then everything's there. But, no, they, they refurbish, they retrofit the footing. The best example of that is at Busch Gardens Williamsburg with Big Bad Wolf that used the same um, original footing holes that used some of the same original concrete. So they very well could um, have reused those footings or just buried them if it wasn't in a place of importance. And let's just say you were going to put something there like a station or even a lift hill or something that required, you know, different specifications, then, yeah, you would want to remove that. You said lift hill. I don't like that. You don't like that? I don't like lift uh, hill. No, no, we don't like lift hills. No, we have enough of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Launch lift. Um, but yeah, so that was a really good observation. Now, the hydraulic line, why would they hydrovac? Keywords. Hydrovac. So hydrovac is pretty much a giant vacuum cleaner and a pressure washer. They use the pressure washer to blast away any dirt, gravel, or um, sediment, and then they suck it up to remove it. But that form of excavation is done for very sensitive areas, and when you need to do precise excavating without damaging the soil around it or without damaging a specific utility, as in the hydraulic line, right? Because if you go in there with an excavator, you're just going to rip everything out. However, a hydrovac, the water is pressurized strong enough to blast away the soil, but keep everything else intact. And again, it's it's to access precise points wherever they want to access of that certain utility. Yeah. So if they've exposed a section of the hydraulic line. Now, the only weird thing is it's not the end of the hydraulic line. It's a specific section. What could that be for? Like, I'm curious. I didn't actually get to ask you this yet. I honestly have no idea because here's the thing, right? If you were going to completely get rid of it, you would just go in there with a backhoe, attach a chain to it, and just rip it all what out. What you call me? <laughs> an excavator. An esca you go in there with an excavator, and you just rip it out, right? And that's the end of it. I think being called an excavator is worse. Those are big. The only thing I can think of that they want to do it this way if they were going to remove it is because there is hydraulic fluid left in the line, and they can't risk ripping it open but even then you could still just directly um vac that out of the line so i at mean at the end of it right at the end yeah or at any point um and it depends you know where the line actually goes to where, where the central pump is for the line and stuff like that and what the importance is of that um I, I, to be honest i have no idea what a hydraulic what any hydraulics would do on like a modern day launch coaster really yeah, in terms of ride function, everything's electrical now. Yeah. Oh, damn. Or pneumatic. So that, that, that's a little confusing. That is very confusing. If they choose to keep that for an existing project. Um, it's also weird because that hydraulic line is, you know, probably pushing 30 years old. So with where they cut this at the very edge of the product, could they cut it there and cap it off? They could cut it there and do whatever they want there. They could put a pump there. They could put, like, a couple there to make it go somewhere else. Okay, so that could be one of the options. Because if they were going to expose it to vacuum it out, they would have done it at the end, right? 
Or they would have, yeah, they would have done it at any point and just ripped it out. They would have ripped it out, to be honest. They, w- they wouldn't use a hydro vac, that's for sure, now that <laughs> I think about it. Because uh, that's for very precise, like, you, you'll see those on streets and stuff when they're installing fiber optic cables yeah. or they don't need, they can't cut any lines. So I just wanted to expose that because to me, now this is very speculative, okay? But I drew this black line because there seemed to be like a very distinct, like almost like straight section here. And I don't know if it's because it's just visually appealing with the two footings dug up, but it just looks like there was there's an evident plan with like that. I don't know, but that that's a huge reach. Again, it is very weird that they would dig up the footings to not use that section of land. Um, and you you are the one who brought this up, Brendan, when Wonderland buried the dolphin pool. Yes. Like, all the concrete walls and stuff still exist there. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that, too, that they don't just do extra work for no reason. Like it's expensive work. It's very expensive work for that type of concrete. Like, there's a lot of places in parks, like at Kings Island, you know, the, the, the bat, the original bat from 1972 or whenever it was built, 1979, those original footings are still there in that vacant plot of land. They're like, someday we might need it. <laughs> what the hell is going on in chat? Like you guys are here to, to watch roller coaster stuff. What in the furry is going on in oh, chat? Honest to God. <laughs> um... Craig is like one of the straightest people I know. He could uh, disappoint. Um, but outside of that, uh, that's pretty much what we wanted to address. I do think, based off of you come flying with me quite often now, both you, well, you come flying more. You've been doing a lot of other things, like important what? things. Yeah, Brendan. Um, <laughs> I have no life. Things seem to be about to heat up. Do they not? On extreme sky flyers plot of land. I mean, it's it's always been kind of like he, heated up, right? Like since they removed the towers. Yeah. Like there hasn't been a day where it hasn't been active. Yeah, and the blueprints guy is out now. <laughs> the blueprints were out this day. He's actually blocked. I blocked the blueprints with the black line. Um, Only in case they can see it. Yeah. The black line. I don't know. I, I promised Wonderland I would never <laughs> post blueprints again. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, so I'm excited. I, a lot of people are upset by my Zamperla video about it being a family coaster. I, I, I really hope not. So, Jasmine, what do you think about the whole theories behind Zamperla? Well, which one specifically? <laughs> We're uh, running a few now. So, like... The whole thing with Zamperla is they announced on a podcast that they have, like, three coaster projects for 2025. Two kitty coasters oh, yeah, yeah. and a family thrill coaster. And that they're most excited about that family thrill coaster. And they think that it'll get worldwide attention when announced. And it's outside the USA. I mean, that kind of seems like a very potential fit. And these days, too, like, keep in mind... A lot of coasters can be considered family thrill that are on people's like top lists. Like there's the idea of a family thrill coaster has come a long way, I think. So I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing that they labeled it that way. And if they are hinting at it being Wonderland, um, I think it's possible. It's very possible. Does Jake pull girls? Nah. (laughs) He doesn't. Jake wishes. (laughs) Love you, Jake. <laughs> um, but <sighs> I, you know, and, and, okay, the fact that Zamperla like went from something like you know redesigning Dragster, building those gorgeous trains, like like in my opinion, not not too many company. I don't think B and M could have done a better job if I'm being honest, to then going back to something like this seems like a, a, a setback, in my opinion. For Zam- not a setback, not a setback, but <laughs> it, it, I don't know. It just, it's frustrating. It, it's very frustrating. I can get into a whole rant about it, but I'm not going to. 
again, like... I see where you're coming from, though, because, like, it would be pretty annoying if, like, we now have three rides in the mountain, the only three rides that interact with the mountain, and they're all family. Like, not a one of them is a true thrill coaster. <laughs> that would be, like, really? <laughs> I, I think the problem is with a family thrill ride is people will be bored of it in a year and a half, two years. The families? I think, I th well, in the summer, it's 75% teenagers in the lines for the big rides. Like, even Guardian, that's a family ride, and it's mostly teenagers in that line. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't really ride Guardian. Ooh, but... one second. Can someone help me? I asked questions on my story, and I forgot to look them up. Nice. But there's a way for me to look at that, right? Good start. What did you do? Uh, I posted a story a bit ago with questions for the podcast. Um, they're not here. I'm just going to keep talking. I mean, they're not there. Um, or, Jasmine, if you have anything you want to add I do want to that. say, like, again, just going back to it's the family thrill thing, like, expired. Guardians of the Galaxy is considered a family thrill ride, and it's a lot of people's, like, up there in their tops. Yeah. Um, Hagrid's has been considered a family thrill ride, and a lot of people love, love, love that coaster. So it's not necessarily... It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be boring, or it has to be True. something, like, on Wonder Mountain's Guardians level... <laughs> But I I don't no. lose all hope if it's if it still is considered a family thrill coaster. So when when Brendan first said that, my first thought actually was like Hagrid's or Guardians of the Galaxy or um. What's the other one? The Tron. The Tron. Um, the only thing though I have with that is look at the parks it's at. Those parks receive 17 million people annually. They're Disney and Universal. Like, though, that's an international destination. Four. Whereas, I can't see Wonderland. <laughs> Brendan, <laughs> did you just I mean, that? Tron, I wouldn't consider Tron a great ride. Well, it, Tron is way too short <laughs> for the amount of time it took. But that's a different ride. Um, but I see your point there. But I just think, like, you know, if it's being hyped up by the manufacturers, like, this is going to get worldwide attention, then I don't think we're looking at, like, a boring family thrill ride. Like, I think we could be looking at something that still would interest a wide range of people and, you know, I, be I impressive in its own way. When they say that can garner worldwide attention or, or a park, I think actually um, Blackpool Pleasure Beach may also be a contender because their park president or whatever was teasing something pretty major because they have a ride that's shutting down. Yeah, but they're competing against that park that just built Hyperion. Yeah, that's yeah. True. so they might actually be going for a height record, yeah. or regaining the height record because they had it in the first place. Um, for your, for um, um the I'm gonna game. answer only really good questions from here, just because, like, obviously, are you 100 percent sure that the station is an extreme sky flyers plot of land? No, but like a very strong inkling. Do you think? I think it's in the mountain. <laughs> It's hard to say. There's nothing 100%, but, I mean, we, we can we can mostly, you know, for with a fair bit of assurance, say that it's either at Skyfly or the mountain. Like, they're not going to build it at Whitewater Canyon or Speed City. Would a Big Bear Mountain... Oh, sorry, Jasmine? What? Do you, do you think Extreme Skyfly Spot of Land is the station? Oh, I didn't know that I was going to answer the question. Uh, <laughs> I, I also think it's most likely... Um, but again, this is with my own bias that I would like to see the space we do have in the mountain used towards it, like having a dark ride portion of the ride. Um, would a Big Bear Mountain clone match up with what you imagine the budget for 2025 is? What the hell is a Big Bear Mountain? Dollywood's new launch coaster. No idea. I think that's above our budget, but uh, I don't know. Wonderland's kind of making me really think hard now about this budget. I've never... I've never seen. I, I think with the amount of money they spent on Dragster, I don't think we're going to get something like that. They didn't spend a lot of money on Dragster. They didn't say how much they spent. but the... Early numbers, wasn't it around like. The, the trains alone were like five, six million. <laughs> yeah, but like. Cedar Fair spends usually like 30 million a year on a thing. So it's like within line. That's true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, I just read something. Oh, more questions. Ch -ch 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 you could see all in the 
go to the, the whole fucking thing. Thank you. I'm Instagram uncapable. Um, what's a what's a Zamperla energy storm? <laughs> what? No, no, no more flat rides. That sounds like a oh, flat ride. <laughs> that does sound like a flat ride. Can I bring a guest who is not and is one of them past member to attend the preseason day? No, I, I don't really think so. Hope not. I don't think so. But you, there was one year you could. Yeah, Do you remember it was that? Terrible. It was busier than opening day. After the construction is over, do you think the third tunnel will be patched up? Yeah, if it's not well, meant for the ride, right. yeah, it'll be patched up. Yeah? I think they're going to put the same paper mache that they put all around it. <laughs> paper mache? <laughs> paper mache. Um, I mean, it could be left as, you know, an egress, like an emergency exit option. But it would be themed, I would think, at least, so that it doesn't look like a hole in the mountain. A lot of these questions are questions like we like obviously like can't answer or don't know. <laughs> um, is Mac mock out of the question? Mac is mock out of the question for twenty twenty five. Nothing's out of the equation. Yes, Craig says yes. Anything is possible. Do you guys have any good questions before we wrap this up? We went thirty minutes over. Sorry, is probably like cursing my name right now. Do you think it could be a dueling coaster like West Coast Racers? No. No, definitely not. We don't have space for even one, <laughs> let alone two. Jasmine? Was dueling crazy? coaster? No, not like, I mean, I would love to see it, but don't think so. Does that count as two, two rides? Yeah. Depends who you ask. <laughs> no, no, not two credits, not that. I mean, two rides for Wonderland. Like, they would have 20, 21 instead of... 20 if they added a dueling coaster yeah right if they're different layouts i think so who's thrill seekers united <laughs> i thought you like timed them out earlier <laughs> big trees <laughs> thrill seekers united. no i don't think so i don't uh, think he was one of them he was i would love a girl um, a or a euro fighter so uh, pizza, pizza. will they add another pizza pizza i think we have enough pizza pizzas what do you think the places for Kingswood are? The places. The places for Kingswood. I know Tiny Tom's has not been removed. If it was, <laughs> I would have a mental breakdown. Donk. That's all I wanted to do. You can have it back. Oh, did you actually want to say something? No, I just wanted to hit you with it. Um, yeah, Tiny Tom's is not going anywhere. Tiny Tom's is... Uh, they better not be. It's renovated to a bigger building by the looks of it. It's right next more to the tiny. Sprite game. Make tiny Tom's bigger. Make more Tiny Tom's. <laughs> I mean, it's such a popular thing. It would make sense that they have two walk-up series. Have you seen the lineup during Winterfest and Haunt for that thing? Did you, in the summer, could you the imagine time. if they put that on the Tiny Plane? Is that... Are you nuts? <laughs> yeah, look down. Be disappointed. He lost a lot of weight. Thank you. Not after the Tiny Toms gets put on the meal plan. Um, <laughs> is Wonderland going to announce this coaster in August? Yes. It is not beneficial to Wonderland to announce a coaster in April. Oh, yeah. They wouldn't announce it so early. They're going to tease gonna us be for teasers. several months. They Can never do it at the beginning of the year, no. though. Well, because they, they announced their capital with the sale of season passes, right? To get people excited to buy. What? <laughs> no. What about season passes? I want them to put up things all over the, the park again so people have to get all... Remember last year with you... Or t a few years ago with UConn saying they just put up a date. Nobody knew what was going on. They just left the random tarp over things and people would just walk by it and be speculating. It was just nice to hear normal people speculate yeah. about this stuff. I want that. That's it. They are going to do that. That's they all. Are. They are. That's why I don't think they're going to announce it right in April. There are rumblings that... This is going to be their busiest season ever for marketing. 
You know, when I was at Olivia, three people came up to me and asked me about Wonderland season passes. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm not even joking. <laughs> Can you attach like, a like, little Wonderland on info <laughs> sign yeah, on you? Yeah. Like, just a little, like, yeah, I literally sat card there. If you need and, and Josh was getting upset. And I literally sat there for 30 seconds explaining to them how the season passes I feel like you over. enjoy that, though. I feel like out of anyone to go up to and ask Wonderland related content, you'd be like. I could stand there for an hour and yeah. talk to them. Yeah, we know. Like, if I ever actually have a question, you're the first person I reach out to. I don't know. I like Wonderland. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's the same It's the same reason you like cars. It's the same reason people like music, obsess over. Everyone's got that one thing that they're passionate about. Cars, Wonderland. I mean, at the end of the day, Kayla, I, I think I said this to you a bit ago. You Golf. were having a really bad day, and you were, like, upset about your passion for Wonderland. And I explained it to you. I said... The reason people like cars is because of how they work. They're cool, right? The sounds, the way they work, how fast they can go. When you really break it down about coasters, guys, it's literally uh, the same thing. It is. It's the, no, it's no. right. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Really bring it down. A coaster and how it works and how fast it goes and that adrenaline, it's the same thing. It, it literally, the, the reason you like cars the is the is. same <laughs> way someone can like a coaster the same similarities I, I literally like when behemoth was testing like yeah you, you i just i was okay just standing there just listening to that roar it's the same way i stand on the side of jane and watch cars drive by exactly watch people try and drive cars it goes, through. That's it the goes part, rumble yeah, watching people try it to has cool mechanical drive. bits it has cool mechanical bits you know there's a lot he's right there's a lot of similarities yeah. now can you put nylon wheels on cars can you go into a parking lot and do donuts and cause such a catastrophe that the whole world needs to know about I it. think no. Surya did that one time. <laughs> Julian in the comments also said airplanes too. Yeah. Right. There's Jetta, also an Jetta overlap power. between like the public transit people and the coaster people. That, There's a lot of overlap between these days. Trains. So trains, like train spotters and stuff. Like I guess plane spotters, but trains is a big thing, right? Like Yep. <laughs> oh, is there We're a all Cedar nerds question? in similar ways, let's be honest. <laughs> Do you know the Cedar Fair what someone comment what's the Cedar Fair lore? The Cedar Fair lore. We have lore? I do think Wonderland's... Oh, I don't know if... The, oh! Wonderland might have I, an IP land eventually. Don't say anything. But remember the conversation? Don't say anything. What do you mean don't say anything? The, the IP land. IP is like um, a brand that they work with. Okay. So I'm saying that Wonderland might actually have an IP-themed area. Um, Fun, Thunder Run kind of is like a subway train. The train ride. They, uh, if they were to retheme Thunder Run, they should retheme it to a one to a yeah to the TTC. That'd be cool. Oh my god! Can you yeah, imagine the TTC get, ride in the mountain? You're gonna get stabbed on Thunder Run. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh my goodness. Um. Good night, Jake. You're back tomorrow. Yay. Who said he's back tomorrow? Jake said he's back tomorrow. I control Jake, so I'm telling him he's back tomorrow, which means he'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, you tell him. Jake, I want you to always remember this. Hydraulics will always be superior. Um, but yeah. The more power, the better. I think that's all we have to say. We were going to touch on something. We had plans to touch on something. Because um, there's been like... There's been... there's been Honestly, not even worth mentioning. It really isn't. Yeah, maybe. I just don't even mention it. Oh, Not yes. Even the time of day. Actually, yeah, we won't mention Not it. Not even the time of day. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We're good. We're keeping an eye on things. There, there. Yeah. You know, everyone just has to. Some we we all do our best. Lightsabers and call it an afternoon. <laughs> Anyways, I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. Jasmine, it was an absolute blast to have you here. Long time yes. no see. And that's Thank all you. I have for everybody. Fun to be back. <laughs> yes. Just here to stir things up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what Jake does. Jasmine's bad. Jasmine and I, yeah, I've known Jasmine forever. And Surya. And then you, too, even. Jasmine's oh, my God. Like, I've watched me. you grow up. Uh, other than that, even we were friends before we started hanging out with Surya. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to be your friend so bad. <laughs> it was so pathetic. When I look back at it. I it was so was, pathetic. Was I used pathetic. to go up to him and I'd be like, "Oh, always can I fun. hang out with you for the day?" And you were nice. You were you did you were like, "Yeah, you can." But I could always tell that like I didn't like riding rides, and I would always try and pick Surya's mind. 
Um, and I would go to him for help even. And Surya was like, I'm just here to ride rides because he didn't know me that well. And then over the years, I think it was when you needed help and I was there for you. <laughs> I, re- I remember the day. I, we were at the park, and I got very unfortunate news. I remember it because they all went to go ride Behemoth. And Brendan's like, oh, why are you here by yourself? You're usually here with, you know, at the time, whatever, my, my significant other. And I told them all, yeah, you know what? I don't think I'm going to ride Behemoth. And, and Brendan looked at me, like, like shocked because when have I ever turned down a ride? And then they got off, and I'm like, oh, no, I need Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we met early 2018. I remember because we, there was the whole, like, everyone thought we were beefing and even you and I thought we were beefing and then we got to talking and it was like, there was no beef. Not at all. As soon as, like, I realized that your audience thought I was like, oh, we were both making separate construction and update videos is what was happening. Yeah. And then his audience was like, you're stealing his content. And people that were watching my videos were like, Emma, you're doing the same thing she's doing. And then eventually I came in the Discord, your Discord, because I didn't have one. Uh-huh. I came in your Discord and I was like, hey, so we're making similar videos. <laughs> and we just became friends and we even like filmed a video together at one point. Like, yeah, it's the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we started hanging out every day and then, oh, it was so sad. I remember when you were moving away, we were just starting to become really close friends, too. And yeah. then you moved away. Um, yeah, and then to be honest, I got super sad when like Craiga and Surya and everybody else started coming into the picture because I just felt like I was missing on so much. <laughs> so it's nice to like be able to virtually be together again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Surya. It's been a very yeah, interesting. It was Sur- <laughs> it's been a very yeah. The early days. Oh, those are good times. Honestly, I wouldn't trade it for the. End of the world. You know, you know what? Here, okay. As bad as something may seem, you honestly need that to make you the person that you're meant to be. I really hope that's true. That's deep. But you know it's what? True, though, though, like, you are literally one of like the nicest per- people ever. Like, genuinely, you are very misunderstood. Like, and that's not directed anywhere at all. But, like, even I've misunderstood you. <laughs> like, you are a really nice person. So, like, don't ever change that. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Okay, I've been around enough crying people for the last little while. So, can we, like... <laughs> <laughs> Craig is not a nice person. No. <laughs> Sick of this shit. Craig is, like, you've been a pain in my butt over the years. That's why I'm still here. Yeah. I think we're going to wrap up the <laughs> podcast right now. Yeah. So thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.